that I witnessed today <clears throat> is Aniruddha, his only child, who is, I believe, 20 years old. He was at the hospital with his mother. He told me how extremely grateful he was. We could imagine he has no brothers and sisters. He's only 20 years old. His father is facing imminent death. The son is there helpless to help him physically, but very much trying to help him spiritually by being with the devotees, chanting the holy names and praying. But he expressed to me his gratitude for this family of Vaishnavas that are bestowing such unconditional love, doing everything possibly they can to help his father attain the supreme destination. Actually, the senior most members of our congregation, many of the senior most members of the Brahmachari Ashram were there going in and out, chanting for him, reading for him, praying for him. But also Aniruddha said, besides my father, for me and my mother, he said, so much help, so much support, so much affection. <clears throat> he said that <clears throat> I really feel as if I have so many fathers <clears throat> and so many mothers. The way the devotees are taking care of me, the way the devotees are extending themselves for me. So there's no possibility of a family like this any other way. This is something I've seen time and again during these traumatic crises in devotees' lives that they find that their own family members mean extended family members aren't near as, as concerned with helping as the family of devotees who are not physically, biologically related, who are related only on the basis of devotion to Krishna and Sri Radharani. and how deep and how committed. He was seeing the immense amount of sacrifices that devotees were making to help his father, to help him and his mother. Was deeply moved, deeply grateful. He was finding shelter and hope at a most hopeless time due to the loving service of the Vaishnavas. Trivikram Prabhu was a wonderful Vaishnav, one of our counselors, very senior counselor. He helped distribute Prabhupada's Back to Godhead and books extensively, member of our dramas, and has helped guide and 
inspire many, many devotees who he personally took care of on the path of bhakti. Service to the Vaishnavas is a very intimate offering to Sri Siddhartha Gopinath. Mad puja pradika. Krishna tells, worship of my devotee is more dear to me than worship to me. And we see in this instance and so many others where there is this selfless endeavor to serve other Vaishnavas, especially at times at need when they can give nothing in return. When we sacrifice so much knowing the only thing we'll get in return is the blessing that we have served a Vaishnava. You see, real service is without expectation of anything material in return. That is bhakti. Anya bilashita sunyam gyata kamanya anukulina krishna nu shilanam bhakti rudam Real devotion is not mixed with any desire for anything physical, emotional, materially in return. We don't even want liberation from suffering. We simply want to serve in a favorable way that pleases Krishna. That is bhakti. It's easy to work when we're expecting something in return. Prestige, position, power, money. But to serve simply because this is what Krishna would want me to do. This will please my guru and the Vaishnavas. That is bhakti. And people could feel that. People could feel love when there's unconditional service. And as far as spreading bhakti or preaching the message, it's a very powerful way of preaching. Because by seeing the example of such people, like Dwarkadish and Vishaka Priya, who are time and again are helping devotees in these conditions. Devotees develop faith, deep faith. Yes, this bhakti is of real substance, it's for real. Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita puts great emphasis on how the Supreme Lord loves his devotees. Bhagavad Gita explains that Krishna is equal to everyone. He's not partial to anyone. But at the same time, Krishna gives everyone a chance by giving us free will. But yeyatam mam prapadyante tam stataiva bhajamyaham mama vart manu vartante manusha parata sarvasha. As you surrender unto me, I respond and reveal myself accordingly. For those who make sacrifices for Krishna, for those who give up things that they are attached to, 
for the higher cause of service to Krishna. Krishna is unlimitedly grateful. We were discussing last week. Gratitude is one of the most precious qualities of a saintly person. Even in the most desperate time, a devotee is grateful. And eager to serve. That gratitude is part and parcel of the supreme gratitude of God. So grateful. Neha pikramanasosti pratyavayona vidyade. That any service we do for the pleasure of the Lord, the Lord never forgets, ever. You may be grateful for what somebody has done for you. But do you remember all the things that people did to you, for you, when you were a little child? How many of you remember? Do you remember all the nice things people did for you in your past life? Or the life before that? Or the life before that? We've all been here for so many, so many lives. People may have done so many things, performed so many sacrifices. You may have had mothers and fathers that practically died for your happiness in your past lives. Do you remember any? So our power to be grateful is very limited. But Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hridesya Junatishtiti Krishna's in our heart. He remembers everything. If you did even one small thing, ten, ten million births in the past, Krishna remembers it. And he's just waiting for you to continue. All those credits are still there. Why? Because of his gratitude. such a friend. He never leaves us. He's seated right in our heart beside us and never forgets. Whatever sins we've done, whatever ways we have offended him, blasphemed him, betrayed him, rejected him, he remembers that too. But Sarva Dharman Purit Yaja Mame Kam Sharanambraja just sincerely try to surrender and he'll forget it all. He'll remove it all. It's gone. It's gone forever. He may not forget it, but as good as that. As if you never did anything. Even if trillions of births you have offended God, just surrender now. It's gone. But one little thing you do to serve him and to please him, never gone. There is nothing within the entire material creation that can erase from Krishna's memory our credits in devotional service. Because it is eternal. Who is a friend like this? So those devotees, according to the sincerity of our effort to please Krishna, Krishna becomes obliged. He loves his devotees. In fact, he accepts position of being subordinate and controlled by the love of his devotees. That is the nature of love. A devotee is conquered by Krishna's love and Krishna 
by his own free will is conquered by the devotee's love. There's a wonderful illustration of this. There are innumerable illustrations of this in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela. <clears throat> One that is very prominent is the story of the passing of Srila Haridas Thakur. The day of Haridas Thakur's disappearance from this world was celebrated by us just a few days ago, Ananta Chatur Dasi. So since many of you were not here for the beautiful Bhagavatam class that was given that day by Gorgopal Prabhu, I'll share some thoughts in this regard with your permission. You sound very sleepy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Haridas Thakur, we know, although he was born in an outcast family, He loved the association of devotees. And he had a very, very deep conviction in the power of the holy name. He was chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra day and night. 300,000 names every day. That's 192 rounds on his beads. And after he finished that, he would be dancing and singing the holy names and preaching the glories of the holy names. In those days in India, being an outcast from the Hindu perspective was a very, very um, limiting situation. He was condemned. He was not allowed in temples. Now he could have just said, well, why should I follow this religion? Why not go to another religion? It'd be so much easier. These because the smart Brahmins the <clears throat> were so unfair to him. But he was a man of that. He was a man of essence. He was tasting the sweetness of the holy name. As he was chanting the holy name, he was experiencing the beautiful forms of Radha and Krishna. He was tasting their qualities, their love, their mercy, their pastimes. He was experiencing the eternal abode of the Lord as he was chanting the holy names. In that state, who can convince you to change? Those who are superficially attached to the to the external forms of their religion without understanding the essence of it have been causing troubles and making offenses as long as we have human history. It is a fact. Sectarianism. It's all based on false ego. I am better than you. That's what it comes down to. Human beings with ego have this tendency, once coming into the 
environment of maya or material energy that we want to be, as Prabhupada say, the lord of all we survey. We want to be controller, we want to be proprietor, we want to be enjoyer. We want to be better than others. So we take our nationality or our race or our religion, somehow or other, whatever we're connected to, we have this lamentable need to feel ourselves superior to others. So for me to feel better than you, that means my religion is better than yours. Or even with the same religion, my denomination is better than yours. Or even with the same denomination, my guru is better than yours. <laughs> or even with the same guru, my temple is better than yours. <laughs> or even with the same temple, my classes are better than yours. <laughs> or my flower garlands are better than yours. Why is this? It's just the opposite of the essence of what religion is. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains, Amani Namana Dena. This is a Vaishnav, eager to offer all respect to others and not expect any respect for oneself. Haridas Thakur was the best of the best from a spiritual perspective. And yet he was condemned and persecuted again and again as being the worst of the worst. But the amazing thing is, he felt himself to be the worst of the worst, even though he was the best of the best. We know the story of Ramchandra Khan. He sent that, he sent that prostitute to destroy Haridas Thakur. And Haridas Thakur was so, he knew why she came. She came to ruin his life. He was, if, 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 he, if he so much did anything with her, he was going to be cast into prison and beaten and disgraced and maybe killed. And this was a so-called very learned, wealthy Hindu gentleman who was doing this to him because he just could not tolerate that an outcast was becoming popular in his religion. But Haridas Thakur stayed there, just chanted Hare Krishna, prayed for this woman, and ultimately she became his disciple. And she shaved her head. Not that you have to do that, ladies, but she, she, <laughs> she gave away all of her belongings, just put on a simple white cloth, stayed in his bhajan kutir in the forest, worshipped Tulsi, and he left, and she chanted 300,000 names of Krishna every day, and people would just come and bring her food. And it's not that he stayed to say, well, look what I have done. He left, never came back. That was Bainapal. And then he went, wherever he went, he went to Chandpur in Adisaptagram. And there, uh, <clears throat> Balaramacharya, Yadunanda Acharya. They were great devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, this is before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed his Leela. But they were great Vaishnavas. And they understood what a great devotee he was, even though they were Brahmins. They asked him to, to give a lecture on the glories of the holy names. 
And um, <clears throat> the father of Raghunath Das Goswami and the uncle, they were so deeply great, grateful to Haridas Thakur. They invited all their employees and other respectable people from the area. And Haridas was simply quoting from the scriptures the glories of the holy name with his own realizations. And one person who was in the audience who was a very highly learned, respected Brahmin couldn't tolerate this. He stood up and began to blaspheme Haridas Thakur right in front of everyone. You are saying that simply chanting the holy names of Krishna, one can attain prema? And compared to prema, mukti is an insignificant byproduct? Which is automatically achieved? And then he screamed out that if what you are saying is not true, which it isn't, I curse you that your nose will fall off. Haridas Thakur, what could he do? He just, very humbly, he said, everything I'm saying is true. It's in the scriptures. Anyways, the next day that person got leprosy and his nose fell off. And Haridas Thakur was feeling very much um, sorry for him. Meanwhile, Govardhan and Hiranya Majumadar and Balaramacharya and Yadunanda, they were going around Haridas saying, we beg forgiveness, we invited you here and you were blasphemed. And Haridas said, no, 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 he just doesn't know what he's talking about. No problem. He wasn't affected. Then from there he went to Pulina, no, uh, Puliagram. And he met Adwaitacharya, who loved him. Adwaitacharya was the best of the Brahmins. He was living in a cave there on the bank of the Ganga. But he was chanting and he was, he would go along the bank of the river dancing and chanting in ecstasy and people would see him and he would tell them the glories of the holy name. His love was so deep and so pure that it transformed people's hearts. Just seeing him, just hearing him, they were transformed and immediately started chanting the holy names. This was intolerable for Brahmins who complained to the ruler that he's ruining our religion, he has no right, he should be destroyed. He must be punished. We know the story. He was arrested and told, just practice your own religion and don't do this Hindu stuff or chant the holy names anymore. If you keep doing it, you'll be beaten in 22 marketplaces, tortured publicly, and murdered. If you stop, we'll let you go right now. He said, I can't stop. I have no capacity. He said, I love Krishna. <laughs> I love Krishna. And one who loves Krishna, must show compassion to other living beings. And the greatest compassion anyone can extend to anyone else in this age of Kali. Jeev Jago Jeev Jago Gora Chandra Bole Kota Nitro Jayo Maya Pisa Chira Kole Enechi Asadi Maya Nashi Barolagi Harina Maha Mantra Lao Tumimagi Wake up, wake up, sleeping souls. This is the greatest act of compassion, to wake the sleeping soul. No matter who you are or what you are, you have to grow old, get diseased, and die, and that death could come at any moment.
I have heard about people who just take their physical and are in excellent health. And a few days later, they have a heart attack and die. Even top doctors. We have heard this happens to in the prime of their youth. Padam padam yadvi padam natesham. There's danger at every step. But the soul is eternal. Najayate mriyate vakadachin. Nahanyate hanyamane sarire. Nothing can impede the life of the eternal soul. To awaken the eternal reality of one's identity, to awaken one's potential to love Krishna, that is the greatest welfare, para upakar. It's the greatest compassion. And in this age of Kali, the means of attaining that is the chanting of the holy names. Much louder, please. Haridas Thakur told the Kazi and, the, gov and the, the king, he said, showing compassion to others by spreading the glories of the holy name is, is, it is my nature because I love Krishna. Even if you chop my body into thousands of pieces, every one of those pieces will be broadcasting the glories of the holy name. They dragged him through the streets. They beat him severely through all 22 marketplaces. They were so exhausted and they couldn't, they couldn't beat him anymore. They, ha they hated him, hated him so much, all of their energy every last drop of their energy, and they had a lot of energy, was dedicated exclusively to, to inflict pain on him and to kill him. And yet when they were utterly exhausted at the end of the day, Haridas Thakur just looked at them with compassion. They said, we don't understand who you are. We're beating you. We're shouting the worst horrible obscenities against you right in public. We're dragging you through the streets like an animal. And you're looking at us with such love the whole time. In fact, you're looking at us like you feel sorry for us. And we can't kill you. Because we can't kill you. We're going to be killed for not killing you. Harida said, oh. I'm causing an inconvenience to you. Just see what I will do. And then he just chanted and gave up his life. He went into a samadhi state. His heart beat, his pulse, his breath, everything stopped. If you had one of those things in the hospital, it would just go just <laughs> straight line. He was dead. What to do with them? They threw them in the river like a piece of trash. That's what they said. Just throw them in the river like a piece of trash. They, gave, they said to the Hindus, would you like to burn him? They said, no, he's not a Hindu. He doesn't deserve to be liberated in the fire. He asked the Muslims, would you like to bury him? He said, no, he's chanting Krishna's names. He doesn't deserve to attain paradise by being buried. 
So what should we do with them? Just throw them in the river like a piece of trash. That's what they did. He floated for a while, then he came out of his samadhi. Now if you were him, you would probably go to the forest and hide. Yes? He went right directly back to the town to meet the king and the executioners, just to say Hadi Ball. <laughs> Just to show compassion to them. Can you imagine he went right directly back to the town? And when the king saw him, he bowed down and said, you are a great saint. <laughs> Please forgive me, Hari Das. Forgave him. Forgave everybody. Such love. Another time someone, a Brahmin, very learned, was with so many others, and they challenged Haridas, why, why you are chanting loudly? According to, our under, according to our knowledge of Vedas, these mantras should be silent, not loud. If you chant loudly, it destroys their potency, limits their potency. And Haridas Thakur started quoting from the scriptures. One after another after another, proving that loud chanting is much more purifying than, than soft chanting because not only do you get purified, but everybody who hears the vibration gets purified. And because he defeated them, instead of just saying, yes, you are correct, sir, they got even more angry. They said, just see, what the scriptures say is correct. It is confirmed today that low class Yavana, Mlecha, is speaking from the Vedas and corrupting and polluting its real purpose. Then huh. they walked away, all of them, after blasphemy and condemning him, misleading the whole society when the Malechas speak from the Vedas. The scriptures only tell us a few instances. It was probably a daily affair for Haridas Thakur. He was always being judged and condemned and ridiculed and misused. But he was always in bliss. <laughs> He would be in ecstasy, chanting and dancing. And in front of everyone, Advaita Charya gave the honors of the, of the first offerings of the Shraddha to Haridas Thakur. Advaita Charya was really putting his reputation on the line, but he didn't care because he understood. The whole purpose of the Varnashram system. Whatever one's particular place in the Varna or Ashram system, the purpose is simply Samsidir Hari Toshanam, to give pleasure to Lord Hari. Haridas Thakur is giving the highest pleasure to Krishna. Therefore, he has perfected Varnashram. He is above and beyond Varnashram. He's a Vaishnav. Advaita Charya was Saragrahi. He was seeing the essence. And he didn't care what anyone thought. And Haridas Thakur was really embarrassed. Because he's thinking himself the lowest of the low. But Advaita Charya Prabhu forced him to accept it in front of everybody. During the Mahaprakash, 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered Haridas Thakur any benediction he wanted. At the house of Srivast, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving the most intimate blessings to all of his devotees. According to their particular mood of devotion, he was fulfilling all their desires. Kolave Chashridhar, he had the bhava of a, of a gopa, a cowherd boy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed to him his form of Krishna and Balaram and the whole forest of Vrindavan and all the cows and offered him any benediction you like. The poor poverty stricken banana leaf seller, he wouldn't take anything. When the Lord Chaitanya pushed and pushed and pushed, ultimately the only thing that Kolavecha Sridhar would ask for, he said, because you're forcing me to take something, just give me this one thing. I don't want wealth. I don't want mystic powers. I don't want liberation. I don't want elevation to the spiritual world. Just let that little boy Nimai come and steal my bananas every day. Let that vision forever be within my heart. That was his benediction. And Haridas Thakur, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was praising him. All of those beatings in Fuliagram, he said, I took them upon myself. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed Haridas and all the devotees his back was bruised severely just to save Haridasa's life. Haridas didn't want anything, but when finally he was forced to ask for a benediction, he said, just allow me in every birth I take to get the remnants of the food that is on your that is from the plates of your devotees. That's all I want. He said, let me take birth even as a dog or an insect near the house of a devotee so that after they eat, when they throw out their plates, I can get some of their remnants. Now, if you were asked for any benediction from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, would you ask for that? Raise your hand, please. That is his humility. That is why he could chant the holy names of the Lord 300,000 times a day. Because he had such love for the devotees. He had such appreciation for the devotees. If you cannot appreciate the devotees, you cannot appreciate the Lord. And the Lord blesses and empowers one who appreciates his devotees. And then Haridas Thakur says to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he says, I am so shameless. I'm so low. I'm so fallen and undeserving. And yet I'm, ex I'm asking you for such an exalted benediction as this. <laughs> 